you hey wafe and praise you hey wafe bait noon so feet you hey wafe welcome royal family to our power of 10 where we utilize the 10 step scale for our daily bible scripture reading praise you hey wafe today is the third day of a bib in the year 6024 fc which means from creation. I am Queen Vashti Artara Yisrael Bath Yahweh, and I will be presenting today's Bible study class. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Jonah in the Old Testament. And at sundown this evening comes in our next scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Right now, though, we're going to be reading from the book of Jonah. And before we begin, we do want to ask our Father for guidance. We, we want guidance through this Bible study. We want guidance through our day, His guidance. We want guidance in all that we do. And so we're going to begin this Bible study class with prayer. I'm going to ask King Yismaya to lead us in prayer this very early morning. King Yismaya. In praise you, Jay Wafe. I'm praise you, Jay Wafe. Bait them for feet, you, Okay, royal family, let us clear our heaven and concentrate on you, Jay Wafe. And you, Jay Wafe, bait them for feet, you, Jay Wafe, who must guide us out of darkness and into his most marvelous light. As we spread forth our hands towards the east from which we came, let us begin. O Yodiwabe, God of our salvation, save us and gather us together and deliver us from the heathens so that we may give thanks unto thy holy name and glory unto thy praises. Blessed be thy holy name O Yodiwabe and Yisrael forever. O Yodiwabe, let them be confounded that persecute us, but let not us be confounded. Let our enemies be dismayed but let not us be dismayed. Bring upon our enemies a day of evil and destroy them with the devil destruction. O Yodewabe, forgive our fathers for breaking your laws, and please forgive us for breaking your laws, and help us to never bring shame upon thy great name, nor reproach against thy works. Surely we have turned ourselves unto thee, O Yodewabe, trying to be upright, and as we confess our faults, Please grant us protection against all of our faults, and cleanse us of our secret faults, and guide us unto the best of morals. For surely our prayers, our sacrifices, our lives, and our deaths are all to be a Yodhe Wabe. Selah. Kedalah. Avenu. Sama Samarim. Nikadas. Samaricor. Tarbo. Mankutekor. Your say. Rajomkar, Kabasamarim, Kane Baharet, Elukim, Kukanu, Kainanu, Tayon, Oshlakanu, Al Katarun, Timok Solakim, Gamanatnu, Lagotemanu, Vero, Tebenu, Liade, Nishayon, Kim, Katenu, Minhara, Hilokat, Amamaha, Bahagilra, Bahateferet, Leolame, Olamun, Sela. And we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yudhi Wabe, our eternal and everlasting King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Barak Hashem, Yudhi Wabe. Barak Hashem, Yudhi Wabe. Barak Hashem, Yudhi Wabe. And blessed be thy holy name. And we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yudhi Wabe, for sending down the Spirit of Truth, whom you sent among us to speak the truth, your most humble servant, Yudhi Wabe. That noon so feet you hit Wabe, who was died out of darkness, and into his most marvelous light. And we ask the O Heavenly Father Yudhe Wabe to please bless Yudhe Wabe, that noon so feet Yudhe Wabe, and the nation of Yudhe Wabe, to be strong, to carry on, to do thy will, and only thy will that you will have us to do. For we are all for one, and one for all. For what I want for myself, I want for my evil brothers and sisters as well. If I have bold 
more soup. My Hebrew brothers and sisters, may I have more soup than anything else. For our motto is, when God do they wabe, when mind you they wabe, when love you they wabe, and when action you they wabe. And let everything that has breath, rock shame you they wabe, rock shame you they wabe, rock shame you they wabe, and please bless you they wabe, bet none so be you they wabe, the Messiah, Selah. Praise you, Hey Wabe, and praise you, Hey Wabe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yud Hey Wabe, Praise you, Hey Wabe, and praise you, Hey Wabe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yud Hey Wabe. Hey. Again, welcome, royal family. All right, today we are going to be reading from the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter 3. And before we begin that reading, we do like to begin with the introduction. There are 66 books to this Holy Bible. And a lot of publishers place an introduction before you actually get into the reading of that book. And that's a good thing because this book is written cryptically. There are hidden messages all throughout this book of wisdom. There are hidden codes, this symbolism all throughout, making it a little challenging to know how to interpret the reading. You know, this Bible is written in so many different ways, at least nine different ways. I mean, this figurative language, there is prose. You know, there are similes, allegories, metaphors, idioms, euphemisms hyperboles, proverbs, parables, personification, maxims, and poetry, and more. And so, you know, it just could be very challenging for the average reader. And so we definitely use a methodology that helps us out. And we use the 10-step scale, and we also read the introduction. Sometimes more introductions from several Bibles will really give you some clarity Um, before you even get into the reading. So today, I want to read from two different introductions. One introduction is coming from the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible for the book of Jonah. And then I want to move into another Bible, an authorized version that was made specifically for Hebrew Israelites um, by the Temple of Love Publishers out of Miami, Florida. We'll do that one in a moment. Let's do this one first. And it reads, The Book of Jonah. It's going to give us some background knowledge that we may not have gathered on our own to help us to better understand what's going on in the chapter that we're going to read from chapter three. All right. The book of Jonah. The name Jonah means dove. In 2 Kings 14, 25, it is stated that Jonah was from Gath, Gathifer, about two miles northeast of Nazareth. And he gave a prophecy which was fulfilled by Jeroboam the second. And that was about 793 through 752 BC. The book of Jonah is unique in the Old Testament in that the entire prophecy is written in the third person. God Yudhe commanded Jonah to prophesy against Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, at a time when the power of the Assyrian Empire was resurgent and posed a threat to Israel. For this reason, Jonah was unwilling to speak to Nineveh. He hoped that God, Yudhe would destroy these people. The book was written after Jonah returned from his mission and had time to reflect on its significance. Some have called the book of Jonah the Acts of the Old Testament because it graphically demonstrates that God Yudhe is willing to have mercy on all who seek him in humility and sincerity. The repentance of the people of Nineveh 
postponed the destruction of their city for roughly 150 years until 612 BC. Many critics dismiss the story of Jonah as a myth or fable because they reject the miraculous element of the great fish. This simply shows their inability to comprehend the supernatural power, the supernatural nature of our God, Yudhe of the Bible. For one, <clears throat> for one who can stay the sun or divide the Red Sea, controlling one fish is not a great problem. Yahshua treated the book as a historical fact, comparing Jonah's time in the belly of the fish to his own time in the tomb. Matthew 12, 40. Moreover, he affirmed that the repentance of the Ninevites was genuine and contrasted their reaction to the indifference of the scribes and the Pharisees. That's Matthew 12, 41 and Luke 32. And so here we get, this complete, completes the reading in this particular Bible. And so we get a lot of background information here that is very helpful now in understanding. And uh, when you hear me say Yahshua instead of the name Jesus, that's because we're in the Old Testament and we know that the man that walked back then over 2,000 years ago was Hebrew. And so we know and understand that he would have had a Hebrew name. His name was Yashur ben Yosef. Yashur ben, a Hebrew word meaning son, Yosef, which many people call Joseph today. And so we know that this man was Hebrew. So we give the name back to him. Now also we do understand that the Old Testament from which we're reading from is in fact our true history. The so-called black man here in America, this is our true history. The Israelites, the 12 tribes from, this, from Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel by God, Yudhe Um Jacob is our forefather. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Abraham is our forefather. Okay, And so we know that this is our true history. And so we read it now with new understanding, understanding that our true history was taken from us when we were brought to this strange land here in America and sold into bondage. We lost all of our history. And so our father, the Messiah, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, came delivering us from the falsehoods and brought us into the truth. And so when we're reading now, we put the name back in correctly, understanding that the name Jesus is a Greek name, but the man who walked was Hebrew. I think we all know that he was Hebrew. Jonah 2 is Hebrew, and you can find that out when you read Jonah chapter 1, verse 9. And we'll go to that a little bit later. All right, so I just wanted to give you that background knowledge. Now I want to read from... Um, the authorized version of the King James Version that was made specifically for Hebrew Israelites. And I'm going to read from, this is by the Temple of Love Publishers, and this is from the Bible many years ago that um, when our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, was among us that the family was reading from. All right, and so this is the introduction from this particular Bible. And it says, The Book of Jonah name and author, Jonah, the son of Amittai, A-M-I-T-T-A-I, -T -T is considered to be the author of this book that bears his name. He lived during the reign of Jeroboam II from 793 through 753 BC, concerning whom he predicted the expansion of the Northern Kingdom, 2 Kings 14.25. Theme and purpose. Distinctive as a narrative among the minor prophets, this book tells the story of Jonah's experience concerning his Nineveh mission. The message of Nineveh's doom is almost incidental. The extension 
of God, Yudhewafe's mercy toward the repentant Gentiles of Assyria projects salvation beyond the limits of God, Yudhewafe's covenant people. And here's the outline. One, Jonah's westward trip and return. That's chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, verse 10. Two, the prophet's successful mission. That's chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. We'll be reading that today about the prophet's successful mission. Of course, Jonah is that prophet with the successful mission. Three, God, you'd Wafe's lesson for Jonah. That's chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. Jonah has four chapters, 48 verses, and 1,321 words. And so that's what we got from out of this particular Bible. And so the more introductions you read from, the more information you'll get. Each publisher has different information to add, so it's really good if you can read from several introductions. I read from several introductions before this class. I started yesterday for studying for this class, and the, all of the Bibles, except for one, I think it was one that didn't have an introduction, but one of the Bibles, I think it was the Dakes, that had a summary instead of an introduction, but it was still the good information to read from. All right, and so now we're going to get into the reading of Jonah chapter 3. It's, and if you get a chance, read the entire chapter. It's, it's good reading, especially when you know how to read with understanding. All right, let's go to Jonah chapter 3. I'm going back to the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible to read from, and it's entitled, Jonah Finally Obeys. You see, when Jonah was first asked or told or commanded to go, he didn't go. And we'll talk about that later. But Jonah finally obeys. Okay, and it reads, And the word of the Lord Yudhewafe came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord Yudhewave. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, Yudhewafe, and proclaimed a fast. And put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Verse 7, <clears throat> and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God, Yudhe Wafe. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God, Yudhe Wafe, will turn 
and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not. Verse 10, and God, Yudhe Wafe, saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God, Yudhe Wafe, repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe. I think we all can understand now how the introduction was pretty helpful to this. We understand, see, you wouldn't have known the name of the king just by reading this particular chapter. Chapter, But the both introductions gave us <clears throat> Jeroboam II, so we know which king it was. All right. And other little things that we did gather that we may not have gathered on our own made it very helpful. All right. And so now, royal family, we are going to move into the 10 step scale. Now, this 10 step scale we have is going to give us even more understanding that we need so that we can gain the message from our father. So, royal family, if you do not have this 10 step scale, you can have it today just by visiting our site at www.yahweh144000.com. That's Yahweh spelled Y-A-H-W-E-H, 144000.com, Yahweh144000.com. And there you'll find the solar calendar. Look for the solar calendar, 6024, because on that solar calendar, we have the daily scriptures, so you can keep up with us and know which scripture we're reading that comes in at sundown. The days on the solar calendar come in at sundown. So the scriptural readings come in at sundown, sundown as well. Also, after you get to the 12th month, after that page, then we have the 10-step study scale. So it's there for you with all the information that will be very helpful to you. And so also on that site, you'll have books there written by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe. There's his instruction in the word for you, okay, so that you can read his word and keep his laws and get the understanding you need in these days. Also, there are books read, written by some of us that have studied our name, and we have some information in the form of books as well for you. You know, we have preparing for the test. We have... Um, studying your name step by step, writing your book step by step. We have a living sacrifice. And there's a few others there that we've written as well that you can get. All right. We also have audios, some of those audios that are not on YouTube that you can pick up. It's a $2 download. You know, so some of the earlier audios that we did not put on YouTube, they're there as well. Now we're putting them on YouTube, but there are some there that weren't there. Then we have natural products as well. We have an elderberry syrup. We have soaps. We have skin care, and we have even um, cream for your hair, hair care. All right, so this is all made by our family members with organic products. They're all organically made, okay, with organic product, organic ingredients, all right? And so anything that you purchase when you go to that site is going to support the building and con the continued works of the holy nation of Yudhe Wafe. If you need a spiritual home, you like the teachings, you like what you're reading from our father, Yudhe Wafe, from the books, you like the audios, you enjoy the skincare products and the things that we have on that site, and you need the spiritual home, then we welcome you home. You can send in your support as well in the form of tithes, donations, and offerings. You can do all that right there on our site at www.yahweh144000.com. Remember, get the calendar. You'll get the 10-step scale as well and the daily scriptures. All right, so back to the 10-step scale that we're going to now use for Jonah chapter 3. Let's take a look at the first step. Step number one. Step number one reads Bible, wisdom, Proverbs 4, 7. 
Okay, so right here in step number one, we find that Bible is the first line of defense. You want that Bible, which, which is why we get up early in the morning to get this done. This class is going on right now in the four o'clock hour on the Eastern Time Zone because we want to get that Bible in early before anything else. Okay, and then we find Proverbs 4, 7, which tells us, that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And so right there in step one, we find that wisdom and understanding from this Holy Bible, this book of wisdom, wisdom and understanding go hand in hand. They go together. Having the wisdom alone will not be enough because you don't have the understanding. And so what good is it to have wisdom and you don't understand it? You can still make grave mistakes that will cause curses to continue for you. So we want to get understanding. We want to get that understanding of the message that he has for us. All right. And so part A of step one tells you to locate and select the scripture in the King James Version, the KJV. All right. And so though you may have many Bibles, the King James Version is the Bible that we use for this particular study. This 10 step scale was de designed to go hand in hand with the King James Version to help you to gain the understanding. And so we certainly encourage that for this particular study, study, you're using the King James Version. All right. And so we did select a scripture for today from Jonah. And we selected Jonah chapter 3, verse 2. And we're going to read that in a moment. But let's move on to step number two. Step number two tells us that we're going to decode the English translation of the words with the concordance. The Old Testament words from which we're reading today will have to go into the Hebrew dictionary of the concordance for that word. Okay, and the number that we will find that's associated with our word of study will be an upright number as opposed to the italicized numbers that are also in there. The italicized numbers are those New Testament words. The New Testament was originally written in Greek, and so when they wrote it in Greek, of course, they used the Greek words. And so in order to find out what the Greek word means, you'd have to go to that word and look at the italicized number to lead you into the Greek dictionary that's in the back. So in the back of your concordance are two dictionaries. There's one for the Hebrew child day um, words, and then there's one for the Greek words in the back. So when you get your numbers, be careful. Make sure if you're in the Hebrew, like we are today, the Old Testament you're going into the Hebrew dictionary in the back. That upright number reminds you that you're going into the Hebrew. All right. And that's where we are today. And so I'm going to read, reread Jonah 3, 2. And the word that we're going to study today and decode is the word preach coming from this particular verse, Jonah 3, 2. Jonah Three, two reads, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Okay, so he's going to preach the words that he was given, that he was commanded to speak. Jonah is now going to go. All right, so we want to know what does the word preach mean, okay? We're going to get a better understanding of the word preach. And so we're going to take that word preach into the concordance. The concordance is a large reference tool with all the words in the Bible there. And you're going to have to find the word. It's, they're alphabetized in there. So we're going to go to the, the P's and find the word preach. We're going to get a Hebrew word that um, preach um, in the Hebrew would, would be kara, Q-A-R-A. -A, 
and the number, if you go and you find this right, you go through all the words that are there, preach, and you find the scripture Jonah 3, 2. That's because you're going to see preach a few times. And so you want to find the verse that we're relating it to, and that is um, Jonah 3, 2. And then you're going to get a number that is going to be an upright number. And the number, if you do this correctly, I'm coming out of the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And we know that there are other publishers out there. Um, and they will probably have the same words. Sometimes it might be a different, uh, the same number. They'll probably have the same number. Sometimes it, they may have a different number. But in the strong exhaustive concordance, the number is an upright 7121. Now that 7121 is now the number that we're going to need. And we're going to go now into the back, to the dictionaries, into the Hebrew dictionary with the number 7121. Of course, the numbers are numerically noted. And you can just go on and go through it and get to 7121. When you get there, you're going to pull out information that's going to be important to your study. Here's where you always are communicating with our Father, asking Him for guidance so that He can lead you to the information that He wants you to have. There's going to be, a, you know, there's going to be more information there that you'll read through. You might not need it all. You want what you need because He's going to preach. And so... We want to find out what that is, what he's getting ready to do when he goes to Nineveh. All right. And so when I got to 7121, it said it was identical to 7122. And so we'll, I took a look at that 7122. I didn't want to pull out too much from there because it had um, information that I didn't think was necessary or needed for this particular study. But you have to ask. But there was some things and we'll talk about it when we get there. But some of the things there I left there. All right, but 7122 means to call out to. So he's getting ready to call out to the people there. It says to address. He's getting ready to address the people with the message that he got from our Father. It says by name, okay? So he's going to address the people. He's going to also let them know the name of which he's coming from. Okay, he's going to let them know. He's coming from the almighty, this message has come from the almighty God, yud heh Wave. okay? It says invite, okay? He's going to be inviting them to do our Father's will and stop doing wickedly. This is an invitation as well in his preaching, inviting them to change their ways. It says preach. It says proclaim and pronounce. This word kara said publish, read. See, Jonah had to read exactly the words that our father gave him. It wasn't for him to speak his own words. Our father said, you're going to preach what I bid thee, what I command thee to do, to say. It says renowned. It says say, S-A-Y, say. Say what I give you to say. Okay, that's what I got from 7121. So let's move into step number three. Step number three says gather additional original information. Pursue the roots and other Hebrew Greek words numerically denoted as the definition indicates. Okay, so there was a number that was indicated 7122. OK, and uh, here is where you rightly divide, you know, the word and you pick out what you need. So from this definition and from this number, and you can go back and you can check why I left some of those things there. They were more on a negative note, like accosting some people or whatever. And we know that Jonah's not going there to do that type of work. But there were two words in there that I picked out and the words were happen and meet. OK, he was going to meet them. Something was going to happen. He's going to go there. He's going to give the word of our father and then we'll see what happens next. OK. And so that's what I pulled out. Happen and meet. OK, he had to go meet with the king. He had to go meet with the people. OK, there's something that was getting ready to happen if they continued in their ways. OK, now, if you know the story of Jonah, you may also know that Jonah was spared. And we read the introduction, Jonah was spared one, um, and they were spared 
the destruction, at least for about 150 years. It was still destroyed later, but he was able to destroy it for that particular generation. He was able to save it for that particular generation, oh, about 150 years. Some Bibles say 100 years. See, that's where you read the different introductions and you find out different things. There's some discrepancy with the amount of time. But we do know that for this particular chapter and this particular book of Jonah, he was able to do what our father did, said to do. And the Nineveh at that time repented and was spared. America can, and other nations out here can gain knowledge from reading this book. There are ways to stop the destruction if this is, a, this is actually, you know, an example to the world that if you return, if you come and return to our father, yud he he can spare the devastation and the destruction. You don't even, it says in the introduction that we read, you know, we know it's, this book is all about the covenant people, Israel, and the trials that we've gone through. And, but this book right here, Jonah, is letting you know even if you are not those people that we're speaking of in the Old Testament, it's all about Israel. If you're not part of the 12 tribes, but you're of other nations, you'll understand that even God, Yudhe is the God of all nations, and he can save all nations as well just for returning, returning to the laws. And right now you'll be returning to the laws through you know, the royal priesthood, through the 12 tribes, Judah, chosen to rule to give the instruction of our father. We are like Jonah. We are the ones coming to the world, okay, to let you know how to have peace, how to enter into his rest. And if you follow the instructions that he's giving us to give you, if you're another nation, then you too will experience the heaven's the heavenly mindset, peaceful living, calmness, tranquility, blessings. And so this story is like, in a sense, a parable for us. Long story. We looked at the word parable yesterday. A story representing one thing, but really meaning something else. And so we look at it like this. You see, this Bible, again, is written figuratively. And so you have to figure it out. But we can utilize our Father's study method to figure it. You can read the introductions also to gain the information. You will see the parallel, how this country that we're living in right now, or wherever you are, how it's not following the scriptures, the word of our Father. We don't celebrate all those other holidays out there. Those are not prescribed for our Father. We celebrate the feasts that are mentioned in the Old Testament. We start out with Passover, which is coming in a few days. We're on day three of a bib. The Passover is on the 14th day. That's our story. That's our history. Us passing out from the land of Egypt through the Red Sea. That's our story. We were spared by our father, yud he Okay, so we honor the Passover. And then we have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where we don't eat the leaven for that eight-day celebration because we didn't have time to wait for it to rise. We had to hurry. Pharaoh was after us. We had to get going. Yeah, we put plagues and Pharaoh was upset, didn't want us to go on and worship our father and came after us. And Yahweh destroyed them. Same yud Wafe, same God, destroyed them back then that would have destroyed Nineveh. But Nineveh repented and fasted and was spared. And so we are like the Jonah, you know, this is our true history. And we are now making the connections. And so we are now proclaiming to the world, our father returned to his laws, his judgment, his statutes, commandments. All right. Praise you. Praise you. Okay. So we are in step three and we pulled out happen. We pulled out meat. And we're moving on now into step number four. Step number four. It says, consult the lexicon for greater latitude on original information. Okay? So now we're going to move into the lexicon. 
The lexicon is another study tool that you'll need to have in your arsenal of study tools. You know, this is a battle that we are in, but it's a battle in your own mind. You're battling within yourself because now you have to make a decision as to whether you want to continue to eat from the tree of good and evil, which was in the midst that we ate from for like 6,000 years. It was the tree that Satan was able to rule from for 6,000 years. Yahweh gave him a sentence. His time is up. He only gave him 6,000 years. This was the sentence he received to see if he could do well. After Cain killed Abel, he was given a punishment. And he was given 6,000 years to prove that he could do well, even that he killed his brother. But he couldn't do well. And Yahweh said, if you don't do well, then I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get your rulership. It's going to be done for you. And so that's what it is. He wants you to believe you're in 2021 or whatever year you're hearing me um, when you hear this. But we're in, uh, they're, they're in 2021 right now, but we're in 6,024. You see, Satan wants to give you the wrong time. He doesn't want you to know that he was given a sentence of 6,000 years according to solar time. We don't use lunar time anymore. We were on it, but now we've switched into solar time because our father says that the sun is the ruler. Sun and solar, synonymous. Okay, and that's the time that he gave Satan. And so we need to count correctly and know where we are. And when you find out you're in 6024, you recognize why Satan's kingdom is self-destructing right now. He was only given 6,000 years. Our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nusofi Yudhe Wafe told us it's not going to get better for Satan. His time is up. He's on the way out. So everyone that's in that tree of good and evil need to get out. This is our proclamation. We're proclaiming this to the world. It's time to get out of that tree. Try, try to get out. Time to get out and get into the tree of life now. Eternal life. You're going to have a choice to make. That's your judgment now. You have to make your own decision. This is your battle. We're not battling anyone else. We're battling right within. This is why we're utilizing these spiritual tools that help us with our spiritual growth to make a correct decision. All right, so let's move into the lexicon. Gonna, the words in the lexicon are identical to the words in the concordance. And by the lexicon, you're going to get greater latitude on the ori original information. So you're going to probably get more information than you got. And so you have to always ask our Father through this study to give you what you need for your understanding. Remember that. You want to always have his guidance. This is studying his divine mind. So you want to have his guidance. All right. All right. Welcome, family that just joined us. We are in the lexicon. We're on step four. We're on 7121. Our scripture of study again is Jonah Chapter 3, verse 2, the word is preach, and we are finding out what Jonah is having to do as he goes to Nineveh. Yahweh had a message for him to proclaim and pronounce. They have to stop their wickedness, which is what we're doing today. We have to stop the wickedness, okay? And so we're finding out that the number 7121 Kara from the lexicon means to cry out. Now, the lexicon, there are two of them. There are two lexicons. Okay, there's one for the Hebrew Chalde, um words in the Old Testament, and then there's one for the Greek. We're in the Hebrew lexicon for the number 7121. All right, be careful. The books look similar. You can pull the wrong book and get the wrong information. All right, we're in the Hebrew for 7121. We're in the Old Testament, and the word... Kara means to cry out. So Jonah had to go and cry out to Nineveh. The words that he got from our father, yud -He, he had to call. It says outcry, to cry, to cause to go out. He's wanting them to cause to go. He was causing them to leave what they're doing, the evil that they're doing. Get away, get out of it. Same that we're doing today calling you out of that tree of good and evil. 
you're in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we're calling you to get out of there. It is about to be destroyed. It's on its way down. Self-destruction. We're in 6,024. There's not a lot of time left for that particular tree. It's going down. We're calling out to all nations. We're calling out to our people. Get out of there. Do like Nineveh. Repent from the highest ones to the lowest, to the highest officials, to the most humblest servants. Get out. It says to call upon. Well, who do you want to call upon in this day? You want to call upon our Father, the Almighty God, you, hey, wav, hey. That's who you call upon. No one else is going to come to get you. He sent his son, yud, hey, wav, hey, bait, nun, sofi, yud, hey, wav, hey, with this message. How to study, how to get an understanding And he's leaving it with his 144,000, the royal priesthood, to take on and carry on the works because he is within us, guiding us. We're connecting on a daily basis and we're showing you how to do the same. Call upon our father. That's who you call upon. It says to ask aid. Well, where are you going to get your aid from? You're going to get your aid from our father when you call upon him you actually have to go through the sun yud hey waf hey bait noon so feet yud hey waf hey that's the order got to go through the sun now he gave his son all authority and his son yud hey waf hey bait noon so feet yud hey waf hey also gave us the children of Israel the 12,000 from each tribe authority to govern and rule in righteousness. He's sending us out just as he did Jonah. Okay. It says, especially by God, you see, so you ask aid, especially from him. Let everything you do be from our father. You get guidance from him before you speak, ask him. Before you make that decision, before you make that determination, before you, whatever it is that you're getting ready to do, ask him for guidance. It says, proclaim this amongst the nations. We have to proclaim our father's word the way he gave it to the nations. Can't be our own word. We have to get his guidance and allow him to lead us. And that's what we are doing. And we're proclaiming now to the nations. It's time to leave that tree. It is on its way out. It says to declare. To announce freedom, it says. See, you can free yourself. It says to slaves in parentheses and captives. See, you're, 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 in, slavery. you're in slavery when you're in that tree. You're captivated. It says captives. You're captivated by his philosophies, the philosophies of Satan, Lucifer. The tree of good and evil. Your minds are captivated on a daily basis, but the daily basis through television, through video games, through all the devices that he has put there to keep your mind captivated and keep you away from his laws, judgments, statutes and commandments from studying him. Satan has got you and you have got to get out. It says to call. Anyone to oneself. Who is that oneself that he, we're calling? We're call, he's calling to himself. He is that oneself. That's that one mind, that one love that we want to connect to and have that one action, the oneness in our Father. We want to dwell in his good graces, in the tree of life, the divine mind of Yudhewaf. We want to connect to his divine mind and be one. It says to call together, to invite, 
to invite anyone to a meal. Well, we're inviting you to a special meal. A meal from the tree of life. We want you to eat from the fruits of the tree of life, not the fruits of the tree of good and evil. You know what happened when we ate from that tree? We were cursed. 6,000 years of cursing, time to get out. It says to summon before a judge. Well, who is the judge? The judge is our father. Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nusofi, Yudhe Wafe. To choose. See, he's choosing his children to go out and preach this message. And then you choose what you want to do once you hear the message. It says to call upon the name of God. Of course, we know it's God. That's who you call upon. This is all coming from the lexicon 7121. It says to celebrate. It says to praise God, to implore his aid. You see, you need his aid. You need his assistance. It says to recite. And here it again. Again, what are you going to recite? Exactly what our father is giving you. You recite it. You share it. Share this message. This is his message. It's time to leave the tree of good and evil and come home. We welcome you home. Come back home. The tree of life. To read aloud. You see, Jonah had to read the message aloud. It says to read what is written. Jonah was given what to say. He didn't have to think about what he had to say. What he had to do was given to him. We too have this wonderful book, the Holy Bible. And though it's written cryptically, we now have tools and the 10 step scale and we can understand exactly what our father wants us to do, wants us to say. He has books that he's written. All the books on our site at www.yahweh144,000.com. Those are books that he wrote. You can read what he wrote. And you can be guided by him. It says to be called together. To bid to come by calling. It says name. Read aloud, recite to be chosen. See, you were chosen to hear this message. You were chosen to come back to the tree of life. It is your decision that you have to make. We certainly invite you home. We certainly invite you to join us. We certainly invite you to listen in on these classes. When you go to our website, if you really want to be a part and you want to be in his rest, join us. Send us an email. If you order a product, you'll be placed on our email list. If you write us an email, you'll be placed on our email list. And you'll, be lear you'll learn then how you can be a part of this wonderful movement as we gain the messages on a daily basis. All right. I got all this from the lexicon from the number 7121. Remember, it's the Hebrew lexicon. You can go back in and you can get the information for yourself. All right. But this is what we have to do. We're moving to step five. Step five says define Hebrew and or Greek definitions. OK, today we'll be defining Hebrew definitions of the original word or words selected in step one by use of dictionaries. See, we're going to take one word here from the definition of the word preach to further define. However, you are not limited in your studies because you can study one word or you can study words. See, you can you can study as for as much time as you, you have to study. 
And so you can really get some really good clarity when you take these words that you find and you go and study those words as well. See, this can go on and on and on. This is infinite. Why? Because our Father is the Word. So it's infinite. He's infinite. So you're studying attributes of His mind, which is infinite. And so we try to keep our study for today within an hour and a half. Sometimes we go over, but we do try to keep it in that time. But we don't want that to limit your studies. Okay, we're just doing this so that we can get the message out on a daily basis. But, you know, you can study. You know, when I studied this, it took me more than an hour and a half to study this. It would take me about an hour and a half to deliver the message. But this is what I've chosen to do. This is my day. This is what I've decided to do because I serve him. I do now understand that I'm his servant and not Lucifer, Cain, the tree of life, the devil. I'm not serving them anymore. I'm doing my best on a daily basis to serve our father. And so I had to reconstruct my day, redesign it so that it serves his purpose. He said our only purpose for being here is to serve him. And he gets Pretty upset when you don't. You'll find out when you learn about Jonah what happened when he thought he was going to get away from having to deliver this message. And we'll go into that a little later. All right. So we're going to go through the dictionaries. We're going to find a word from the word preach that we can further look up and get some more clarity through the dictionaries. More than one dictionary we're going to use because he said one dictionary is just not enough to approach his divine mind. All right. So, going to go into the American Heritage Dictionary. Just so you know, when we were in step four, we did have that other number, 7122. And remember I told you there was information in there that I decided to leave there. When I did go to 7122, I just want you to know before I go into step five again, that this, the same words that I pulled out were the words that were there in 7122 in the lexicon, to meet and to happen. Just so you know, I did go there and it was what I pulled out. I thought that was really interesting. All right, so let's go to the word, the step number five again. We're going to take the word proclaim from the word preach. Okay, the word originally was preach and now we're going to move into proclaim and we're going to further define proclaim to get more understanding about what Jonah was sent out to do and what we are also being sent out to do the royal priesthood, the 144,000 of Israel. All right. So for proclaim American heritage, it says to announce officially and publicly. Okay. So that's what Jonah had to do. He went to the king. Remember jo Jero Jeroboam the second to announce officially. And then the king went ahead and announced it officially. So that all the people would repent and fast. Okay. It says declare. So he had to go and declare the message that was given to him to indicate conspicuously. See, this couldn't be something that was inconspicuous, that was hidden. He had to let it out. He couldn't keep it in. Yahweh gave him the word and he had to go. That's what our father told him. He wanted him to go. It says make plain. See, he had to make it plain. He had to make it crystal clear. The message that our father gave, the way he was given it. It says to praise. So he had to praise our father also. And we have to praise him. Extol. E-X-T-O-L. All right. Let's go into another dictionary. Let's go to the Merriam-Webster's for the same word, proclaim. See what it has to add. It says to declare publicly, okay, typically insistently, in, insistently, you have to be insistent about it, insist that this is what you're going to do. In order to be saved, you've got to follow these orders from our father, Yud He Wav. He had to be insistent about it, insistent. Okay, proudly or defiantly, either in speech or writing. Announce. He had to come announcing. To give 
outward indications of. Show. He had to show them what would happen if they didn't. They were getting ready to be punished. They were getting ready to be killed. They were getting ready to be destroyed. He had to tell them that. He's like, look, if you're not going to follow the laws of our Father, if you're not going to get back on the, on the right track, if you're going to continue in your evil, Nineveh, you're about to be destroyed. You got 40 days. He showed them. He said, look, in the next 40 days, this is going to happen. Okay? 40 days. To declare or declare solemnly, officially or formally, praise or glorify openly or publicly. This wasn't a secret. He went openly, extol, declare. Okay, this comes from Miriam Webster's, and you could always take any of these words and go further with it. Let's go to the Random House for the proclaim again. And Random House says, announce officially and formally. All right, so that's step number five. Let's move into step number six. And it says, consult several dictionaries and compare. We've done that. Now it says, include Bible dictionary and Bible interpreters dictionaries. Okay, let's go into the Bible interpreters dictionary. I'm going to be utilizing the Vines Expository Dictionary of Bible Words. I'm going to go back to the original word preached because that was the Bible word. I'm going to take that original number, 7121. And what I do when I go into the vines is I go into the index first with the original number that I got. And so that number is 7121. I do that because oftentimes when you go to look for the, the word, you won't find it in its form that you were studying. Like the word preach, it'll tell you to go to maybe some other numbers. No, uh, not sorry, not other numbers, but other words. So when you go to 7121, they do give you um, a different word than preach. You could go to the word 7121 tells you appeal, call, guest, invite, meet, proclaim, and read. Those are the words you could find under um, 7121. You can go to each one of those words and you can gain some more information. It didn't give you the word preach. It gave us those other words instead. So what I did was out of those words, I went to the word proclaim. And I pulled out some information about the word proclaim, because that was also the word that we went into um, in step five anyway. So that was still good for us. So I went to the word proclaim with the 7121, and it told us to, it meant to call, cry, proclaim, call, and read. So we understand that Jonah was called to go ahead and proclaim and read exactly what he was given. It also says many of the occurrences of Kara, Q-A-R-A, -A, the Hebrew word, involve human activity. Okay, so we see that Jonah had to actively be involved with helping to save Nineveh from destruction with bringing Yahweh's message to them and proclaiming what he said. And this activity that Jonah did led Nineveh to fast and it was proclaimed the fast was proclaimed throughout Nineveh this was human activity this was that fasting so this is what this definition says many of the currents of Kara involve human activity so we see that right here Yahweh called on Jonah to act and then Nineveh had to choose what to do they also had to act and what they did, their fast, Yahweh, it caused our Father to not destroy them. Okay, this is what I gathered from the vines under the word proclaim from the number 7121. All right, so let's now move into step number seven. It says define Hebrew and Greek definitions of the original words selected in step one by use of the synonym finder. All right, so now what we do, we need a synonym finder in our arsenal. We've got our Bible dictionaries. We've got the Bible. We've got the concordance, the lexicons. You see, we have several tools here to get this job done. 
so that we can gain a message from our father on a daily basis. We're now going to go to the Sendum Finder. I'm going to go to the J. I. Rodell Sendum Finder. However, I understand that there are many publishers and whatever Sendum Finder you have is what you'll use. You can also put use your thesaurus if you have one right here because you're going for, you know, synonym. And so for the word proclaim. I get from the J.I. Rodell, I pulled out several synonyms here, announce. Okay, so we know when you're announcing, you're making that um, a public announcement when you announce. Uh, advertise. Promulgate, you know, that's like setting forth publicly, like a doctrine, a teachings. Okay, so that's what proclaim means as well. It means declare. Okay, that's when you announce officially, you state it emphatically, you declare what was being said to you, you'd go out and declare it. This is what we have to do. Profess. It says herald, you know. Now that's a, a royal or official messenger. So our father sent an official messenger. He chose Jonah to be the messenger. It says publish. You know, when you publish, you're making it public. You're making something generally known, okay? It says broadcast. Make known. Signal. You know, you've got to put up a sign, a signal to the world. Well, Jonah was the sign. He came signaling their destruction in 40 days. And they decided to heed the message. It says cry, blaze, you know, blazing, blazing. That means to proclaim again, blare. Now, see, when you blare, that's a, that's you're exclaiming loudly. You're sounding something out loudly. So he went blaring. It says trumpet. Disclose. See, he had to make it open now. Disclose it. Reveal. He had to reveal because the people of Nineveh weren't hearing the message. Our father didn't talk to them directly. He sent one of his own, a Hebrew, one of the children of Israel, to give the message. And this is what our father's doing today. He's talking through his son, Yud Hewafe, Beit Nusufi Yud Hewafe, a Hebrew who's talking to his children who are now proclaiming to the world. You're still going to get the message. If you're another nation, if you're not Israel, you're another nation, it's okay. You're going to get the message and you too will be saved. In fact, you'll be blessed. If you bless us, You'll be blessed. Curse us and you know there are going to be curses for you because we have been ordained to deliver his message to the world. And we don't want you to experience the curses that we experienced. We are the example of what not to do when we were breaking the laws. We were the example to the nations, to the world. So you get a chance to see our father will punish for not keeping his laws. And so we were out there to show you what he'll do, even his children. The, tr tw the tribes of Israel, 12 of them, Judah chosen again, 1 Chronicles 28 and 4, to be the ruler. But we got punished severely punished. And so we're letting you know that you see that you saw that <laughs> you helped in the punishment. But, you know, we understand and we ask our father for compassion for breaking the laws. And now we return. And now when we return, all of that punishment ceases. He has compassion for us and he's putting us back in the proper place so that we now can go out to the nations, to the world and let you know what happens if you don't return. You have a very good example. <laughs> we hope you return to his laws. We hope you bless us so that you are blessed. All right. It says pronounce. We have to pronounce. Rule. 
it lets you know who the rulers are and how we are going to rule in righteousness because we're taking direction now from our father, the divine mind. And that is righteousness. That is life. It's his decree. So when you're, when you're proclaiming, there's judicial decisions that are going to be made. So hopefully you'll make the right choice for yourself so that you are spared and can enter into the understanding and the rest found in our father. It says report and ordain. Okay. See, so, you know, Jonah was ordained to command and give the orders of what should be done. So are we, when we return, we are ordained by our father to go out and share this message with the world. All right. This is the information that I got from the J. I. Rodell Sinem Finder. Let's move on to that special note that comes before step eight. And it says, always ask yourself the question, is this study beneficial to me? If the answer is yes, continue on. If the answer is anything but yes, discontinue and start on something that will be beneficial. You see, right here is where you can assess your understanding. You can evaluate if you're getting the message. Now, if you are and you're connected and you've been asking for guidance, continue on. If for some reason you may have forgot to communicate with our father and you're out there, you're spinning around and you don't know what you're doing, where you, why you're doing it and what message is coming at you, you, don't, you can't really hear it, then you need to discontinue. Stop that. That's not working for you. Refocus, ask our father for guidance and allow him to guide you through this study so that you can gain that message that you're looking for today. And so we're finding out that yes, this message is beneficial. We're finding out that Jonah, a story in the Old Testament is very symbolic of today. Remember there's symbolism all throughout here. And so Jonah, you know, a Hebrew was ordained to give a message. All right. And so the message is to return to our father's laws, judgment, statutes, commandment, return to him. Stop the evil, the wickedness that's going on out there. If it's not righteousness, then you need to drop it because you're going to be destroyed. That's the message. So, yes, this is beneficial because you have to make a judgment within yourself. OK, and so, yes, this is beneficial. So I can go on to step number eight. Step number eight says return to the original scripture in the Bible and read it with new understanding. All right. So let's go back to Jonah three, verse two. And it reads, arise. Go unto Nineveh. That great city. And preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. See, when our father sends you out to perform his mission, rest assured that he has thoroughly prepared the way for you with his words. Proclaim means to read what is written? See, we've got plenty of books. You can read what he wrote. You, you, can, you can tell somebody exactly when you read his words. You don't have to go off on your own word, what you think it means. You can read exactly what he says. Jonah's story can be applied today. We can read what Yud Heh Wav Heh, Beit Nun Sophie Yud Heh Wav Heh has written. Proclaim means to broadcast, declare, and announce publicly. See, Nineveh was spared destruction. America can learn from listening to Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe's openly declared proclamations that he is judging America. 
right now. Jonah finally recognized that he was chosen to deliver a message that could save many people. We too have been selected to openly declare yud heh wav -Hey message of salvation. When you are chosen, you can't hide. <laughs> Jonah tried that. He provides us with all we need to do this work and be successful. All right. So this is the new understanding. Now let's move into step number nine. Step number nine says, search the scriptures. That's John 5, 39. Look for helpful cross references in several Bibles and then crack the codes with the new found information. Okay. Now here's where you will need your Bible to have cross references. Okay. Now the Bible that I'm reading from right now has cross references down the middle margin. Some of the Bibles that I have have cross references along the sides of the pages. I've seen them like that. And even on the bottoms, you can find cross references in some of the Bibles. Now, if you're reading from a Bible that doesn't have cross references, we strongly encourage you to get a Bible that does have the cross references. We don't want you to have a misstep right here. We don't want you to miss any of the steps right here. We need all the tools. Remember, this is a spiritual battle. We want everything that we need in our arsenal so that we can be successful and be victorious in this battle. All right. And so the only time you can move through this step without really doing it as if your Bibles don't have a cross reference. So you can use several Bibles. Now, the, the Bible that I'm reading from right now, the, the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible, did not have a cross reference for this particular verse. Sometimes I move right on. I, I look in others and I move ahead. But I, for some reason, I really wanted to see, could I find a cross reference here for this? Because, you know, the book of Jonah is not one of the books that we visit often in our um, scriptural readings. And so I wanted to get as much information as I possibly could. So I went to one of my favorite other sources. It's an online source. It's openbible.info. And when I went there, it gave me um, a reference and it's in Jonah and it's Jonah chapter one, verse two. And I kind of, I really want to go there because I want you, you, if you haven't really read the story of Jonah, it would be nice to know that it's nice to know that Jonah finally did obey. But let's see what happened the first time. If you don't mind, I want you to show you that there was a first time because, you know, remember that was this opened up saying um, this was this. And the word came to Jonah a second time in chapter three. That means Yahweh came to him a time before that. OK, so the first time let's go there. This is the scripture one and two. OK, so in in chapter two of uh, in chapter one, verse two, it says, arise, <laughs> go to Nineveh, the great city and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. OK, so right here, Jonah was asked to go right here. But he didn't go. He fled. And then, remember, you can't hide. He fled. He didn't, he, didn't want, he didn't feel like he wanted to go there. He knew this was a great city, and he didn't want to go. Jonah fled. And guess what? <laughs> Yahweh came right after him. When Yahweh calls, when he bids you to do something, when he bids you to go, it's best to obey. You see, Jonah didn't go. He went running, and he went... <laughs> Jonah was actually, he went to the sea, got in some ship, and the ship had problems because of the water, the tumultuous water, the waves and everything, and everybody in the ship knew something was wrong. They knew that something was going on. They asked Jonah, and they said, uh, you know, what's going on here? Who are you? What's going on? And then when Jonah said, Jonah tells them who he is. Right there in, 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 in 1, 9. Let's look at uh, Jonah chapter 1, verse 9. They're asking him who is, you know, they know something is wrong here. You know, they said, the water doesn't usually do this. Who are you? And guess what he says? He says, and he said unto them, 
I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord Yudhe the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. And guess what? <laughs> when you get to verse 10 right there, the men, they were exceedingly afraid. And they asked him, why is he doing this? And, he, and then Jonah actually told him, just go ahead and put me in. You scared me. Just go ahead and put me, lay me, put me in the water. You know, and, I, and, and your boat will stop. You know, your ship will stop, you know, all this carrying on. And, you know, you, you don't have to be afraid anymore. Just put me in. And, they, and, they, and he actually did get placed in the water. And guess what? Water was tumultuous. And guess what? Jonah was placed in the whale's belly. The great fish. It says great fish here. Three days and three nights. You see, so Yahweh prepared this great fish to swallow Jonah up for three days and three nights. He was in there. Jonah then from inside there, he he prayed to Yudhe while he was in the belly of this great fish. And Yahweh had compassion. And that's in um, two verse ten. In, in 2 verse 10, let's go there, 2 verse 10. And the Lord, Yudhe spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. See, he spake to the fish, and it released Jonah onto the dry land. So now Jonah now understands that when Yahweh tells you to do something he told him to arise you know that means he had to lift himself up spiritually in the mind and understand what he had to do he had to raise himself he had to perform Yahweh's will we too have to arise we were put into the belly of the whale we were also in there over 350 years you know three days three nights 300 we were in there too, in the belly of this country, this great country here. And we were afflicted. You see, this is almost a story almost that we can, you know, parallel to ourselves. And we cried from within. And our father heard us. And just as he did back in the days of Moses, he is on the scene. But you have to pray to him. For his to have compassion. Jonah recognized that he needed to go on and perform Yahweh's will. He knew this time, the second time Yahweh called him. Oh, I better go. He knew now it was time to follow Yahweh's command. You see, he will get his children. He will. He will punish us. It's time to follow his instructions. This is a lesson for those who have ears to hear. Let them hear. When you are called by Yudhe Wapi to serve him, and that's our only purpose, to serve him. That's why we're here. It's best to obey. Okay, so this is what I got from going to uh, Jonah 1 and 2. I'm glad that I went there because actually I read all of the book of Jonah. You just, if you get a chance, just read it. It's, 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 it's good reading now that you have some background knowledge. It, you know, I would suggest to you to read the entire book. It's, it's not that long. There are only, I think it's four chapters here. All right. And so um, let's move on to step number 10. Step number 10 says, keep an open mind. You know, you want that mind to be kept open. You want to preserve it. You want to guard it. You want to protect it at all costs. Now that you have this open path to the door, you want to keep it open so that you can walk in. You don't want any clutter. You don't want this path to be obstructed in any way. You want to be able to enter in through this door. You want to be able to access, attain, and reach that information that he has there waiting for you on a daily basis basis. Okay. You can use any given tool. This is step 10 at 
any given time if necessary. Sometimes you have a word that you just don't quite understand, even though you had some dictionaries there. Okay, so you can go to several dictionaries. You can also go to your synonym finder. Go to the thesaurus. You know, get clarity. You want the understanding. Sometimes you've recorded in your notes a word, a synonym, and you don't understand it. Well, go to the dictionary. And get understanding. It's all about getting understanding to this book of wisdom. Let you Wafe guide you. That's key. This is infinite knowledge. As you see, you can go on and on and on because it's the word. And he's the word. He's infinite. So you need a guide. Let you Wafe guide you. Remember to communicate with him throughout your study. Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe comes in the volume of the book. That's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. That's Psalm chapter 40, verse 7. And it's really good to know that he's in the volume. That means all 66 books of this King James Version, he is there. So no matter what chapter you're deciding to read from for the day, he's in that chapter. No matter what verse you have selected, narrowing it down to a particular verse, he's in that verse. Why? Because he is the word that you have decided to study. And so he's the perfect one to guide you because it's his word. And he will take you right to the message that he has for you today. The message today, stop doing the evil that you may be doing. Move into the tree of life and do it quickly. He's about to take the tree of good and evil down quick, fast, and in a hurry. It's on its way out. You can see the different things that are going on in the world. It's time to move and to move quickly. You know, when the sign was placed out there, the yud hey waf hey, the tetragrammaton, that was a signal to the world that our father is on the scene. Don't take it lightly. He's come through his son in the flesh, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wafe, the Messiah, Christ. We said yesterday in our class yesterday, I think it was Mark chapter 4, that word Christ, when we were reading the introduction, it means, uh, it's a Hebrew word for that, Mashiach. And that means the Messiah. And we know that Christ, the Messiah, came to deliver his children. And when you read the Old Testament, you're reading about Israel. Okay. We're not speaking about those that call themselves Israelis and that are in that tiny part of um, North, um, North Africa today. We're not talking about all of North Africa used to be Israel. That was our land. We were the ones that were carried away into this strange land. That Old Testament is all about the true Israelites. That's us. And so the Messiah came to wake us up into the correct knowledge. So now when he put that sign out, it was a sign to the world. Okay, I'm back. Time to stop all the foolishness. Get on track now. The tree of good and evil is going out. You have to make a decision. Study this information. Study the Bible. Use this 10-step study. You will come up with the information that he wants you to know today. And it's all about salvation and coming quickly back to the tree of life, back to the divine mind of Yudhe Wafe, the creator of all things, all things. And remember, the good is going to be triumphant. It's already written. It's going to be done. And so you're being warned to heed the call of our father. I certainly hope that this message today in this class has been beneficial. Join us again. Yud Hei Wav Hei Willing. We are putting these classes up on a daily basis. Sometimes it may take a little longer for the production, but the classes are going up. All right. As long as Yahweh wills, we will do this. All right. And this is a call to the world. Like Jonah, we're making a call. Praise Yud Hei Wav Hei. Praise Yud Hei Wav Hei. Beit Nun Sophie Yud Hey, Wav, hey, we're going to close this out with prayer. Going to ask King Yishmaya, will you lead us out with prayer this very early morning? Praise you, hey, Wav, hey, and praise you, hey, Wav, hey, that no so think you, hey, Wav, hey. O 
okay, we want a family. Let us stand a place to eat from which we came. Tepala, Avenu, Sabasamayim, Yikadas, Samarakar, Targo, Makutekar, Yorse, Brazonkar, Kabasamayim, Kainba, Rex, Elukim, Kukanu, Kainlanu, Hayon, Oshakwanu, Al Katarun, Kimba Solikim, Gamanatnu, Lago Kimlanu, Gaon, Tevenu, Liade, Nisayon, Kim, Kasenu, Mehara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Bahagibara, Bahateferet, Leolame, Olamim, Tela. And we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yerewale, our eternal and everlasting King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us, and let everything that has breath praise you, Yerewale, and praise you, Yerewale, back on so feet, Yerewale, the Messiah, Tela. Praise you, Yerewale. And praise you, hey, Wavi, betting us will be you, hey, Wavi. Yes, praise you, hey, Wav, hey, and praise you, hey, Wav, hey, bait noon, Sophie, you, hey, Wav, hey. Have a glorious day in you, hey, Wav, hey, royal family. I love you. Shalom, uvraka, which means peace and blessings, royal family. Shalom.